Hello friends, once again welcome back to the Automotive Basics session. I am Somshaker and back with a fantastic topic of a can that is bit lengthening and shortening. In this video we are going to learn some important steps of a can protocol. Let me tell you, the first, uh, the first one is need of lengthening and shortening, how it has been accomplished in a can network, how much it has to be lengthened and shortened. Let's start with the first one, the need of lengthening and shortening. Why do we have to lengthen and shorten? To compensate the edge face error, the answer is. The second one, coming to the second question, how much it has to be lengthened and shortened? Friends, as we all know, to accomplish the same or uh, lengthening and shortening, the nodes which are connected to the CAN network must be aware of edge face error calculation and based on which, sorry, based on this parameter, the nodes will decide the bit lengthening and shortening. Again, here the question is, how much it has to be lengthened? That means the third question what I said in the beginning. The lengthening and shortening based on the resynchronization jump width also call it as a RJWO and or we can also say it is say this in another manner as a synchronization jump width that is SJW. Now let's understand the same with a simple analogy. Here you can see I am considering two nodes node A and node B. Let's say node A is the transmitter and node B is the receiver. And also I would like to say in this case, in this example, I am going to consider the transmitter is transmitting it bit one time quanta slower than the receiver, I mean the node B. That means the transmitting speed of the transmitter is lesser compared to the receiver by how much one time quanta as you can see in this slide this is the one time quanta I am considering just to explain you guys as I said the transmitter is transmitting its bit at a slower rate compared to the receiver of one time quanta because of this the needed sample point to the receiver is occurring here when the transmitter is transmitting but the actual needed sample point for the receiver to be occur here as you can see in this slide but what receiver will do it now as we already discussed in our previous video part 20 through 23 the receiver has to lengthen the phase buffer segment 1 in order to compensate this. You can see if the receiver after lengthening the phase buffer segment 1 the needed sample point is appropriate for the receiver so that the receiver can interpret the incoming bit appropriately. As I already said in the beginning of the video these are the some points to be remembered how lengthening and shortening is accomplished in a CAN network with the help of edge phase error calculation and the second question as, a, as we already discussed in our beginning of the video need of lengthening and shortening to yes, simple it's simple to compensate edge phase error E and the third one is based on which parameter phase buffer segment 1 and phase buffer segment 2 will be lengthened and shortened based on resynchronization jump width and synchronization jump width. For queries, please leave comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, Secrets of Automotive Industry, and hit thumbs up. Thank you all.